What's going on guys? So those of you that watch my channel will know that there's a few things that I cannot stress enough. And one of them is if you plow, you must keep a spare set of plow markers on hand at all times because you never know when the other one might break. I purchased these markers in a pinch about two years ago. It was in the middle of a snowstorm. My other plow marker broke and I could not see where my plow was. And I ended up going to a local auto parts store and of course in the middle of the storm they're going to jack all the prices up for all the parts. So 36 freaking dollars for these markers. Had them for two years and they've done well. Except for the other day when I accidentally tapped into it with a bale of hay. And it was just a very light tap and the thing just snapped off at the base. Now I've heard snow plow drivers say that water will actually get down in here and freeze at the bottom and expand and this is why it cracks. This however for me was false. It was a rather chilly morning and I don't really see any way that water could get in here because you have a rubber cap up top and this is completely sealed and additionally when it broke I checked to see if there was any standing water in there and there was nothing so these are overpriced junk. So what I plan to replace it with today is just a basic set of plow markers that's specific make and brand. I buy these from my western dealer. I always like to go to my western dealer like once a year and even if I just stop by and you know buy something small I'll always buy like um, some uh, dielectric grease or like a set of plow markers because I always like to say hi to those people. My, my dealership's very friendly and if I ever need anything from them of course they're going to charge me for it but I like to keep a good relationship with them so. So yeah let's install these. You know, if I wanted to, I could keep that other one on, but because the other one broke off so easy, I'm just going to replace both of them. And that's always a good spare to have. I also want to order another set of these because I really wouldn't trust that much as a spare. Something that I love about my Makita impact driver is it's got this little hook right here, so I just hook it on my belt. I can walk around, go where I need to go. It's very handy. When I put my new markers on, I don't like to immediately cinch them down directly in place because they have a little bit of forward and backwards play and I think it looks kind of unprofessional if you have one pitch forward and the other one's just standing straight. So I like to put them both on and make sure that they match. I figure while I'm doing plow markers, I might as well set out my driveway markers too. I'm too cheap to buy driveway markers, even though they're only like a dollar or two a piece. I actually found all these in the trash, so my biggest priority is going to be protecting this curb along the house here. So I'm going to set these out and then I'll explain them why I put them where they are. It's 
To set these markers in the ground, I'm just taking a piece of quarter inch rod and sharpened up the tip a little bit so it goes through the ground a little bit easier. I'm starting to mushroom on the other side, I really should clean that off, but this is a precaution. I'm just going to throw on some safety glasses because you don't want to shard of that going in your eye and ruining your day. Also, I like to always set them as close as I can to the driveway. I know I have the curb, so that way when I'm plowing, I just need to correct about six inches. All right, so let me try and explain why I keep the plow markers mainly to the right side. Well, of course, because I'm shorthanded too, but uh, generally when you plow a horseshoe driveway like this, you generally plow the snow or you push it to the right side, so you angle your plow to the right. There's a couple of reasons why you do that, and I'm going to try and explain this to you the best that I can. Your truck's wheel base is kind of long, and then the plow is in front of the front wheels. So what happens if you try to plow around this driveway there's always going to be a little section in between that curb and your front tire where you're not going to get it may be a foot depending how tight the curb is uh, because you just can't get your plow in there without your tire going up on the curb so if you then try to angle and push the snow towards the left too you're going to be running over a huge pile of snow uh, good chance your wheels are going to start spinning you're not going to get much traction so generally as a rule of thumb you never push the snow to the left so you always try and push it to the right. Uh, so I have one plow marker right here just to identify kind of roughly where the curb is. And from there, then I can kind of determine where the curb is. Here's the issue with putting a lot of plow markers on the inside of a curved driveway like this is like I said, uh, you can't get your plow directly up against that curb or yeah, you can't get your plow directly up against that curb unless you throw your front and possibly rear tires up on the curb to get in there. Now in the past, I put markers on the inside and I will bring my tire on the front curb like accidentally or something. And then what happens, those plow markers will rub against your, your car or truck and they'll scratch up all your paint. So it's a really good idea to try to avoid putting too many plow markers there. Another cool option that you can do is take a piece of orange ribbon and suspend it from like the tree up there and use that as kind of like a plumb bob. And that way, if you do get kind of close to that curb, the marker isn't gonna scratch your paint. It scratched my paint a bunch of times. I don't even care now. So if you're plowing with a newer truck too, especially be careful. Another thing that I wanna to mention too is let me zoom in here a little bit. If you notice at the front door there, I have two markers marking the edge of the curb. And there's two reasons I do that. One, is I don't want the plow to slam up against that lip on the curb. That's where you're most likely to, to do a lot of damage. So one, it's to identify that the curb drops and rises right there. Secondly, it's there to identify the walkway. And oftentimes when you're plowing a horseshoe drive, when you got a walkway right there, uh, the, I mean, you're gonna get a big pile of snow. You're gonna have a big wind that's gonna go up against that walk. And something that you can do is if you're very skilled and very careful, you can actually take your plow, turn your wheels to the right, sneak the plow in where the walkway is, and kind of push that snow forward. So you kind of help yourself a little bit by moving some of that snow out of the way with the walkway. That's a, a rather advanced snow plowing technique. It takes a lot of skill and you are at risk at damaging property, especially if there's pavers, um, if it's really nice concrete or stamped concrete, you risk scratching it. So you know, do that at your own discretion, but that's just a couple thoughts I have. Hopefully you find some of this useful.